today, I'm going to attempt to find gorillas. Yes, you heard that correctly. Or 400 pounds plus of wild silverback mountain gorilla. And me, I'm on a five week African adventure and my travels have brought me to Uganda. Here under the watchful eye and protection of the guides at the UWA, I'll be heading out into the dense mountainous rainforest in search of gorillas. No other wildlife encounter in Africa matches the astounding experience of spending time face to face with wild gorillas. It's 5 a.m. <laughs> My face doesn't work at this time in the morning. Um, we're up really early and we're heading out into the impenetrable national forest. And as the sun came up, it was time to begin our journey into the forest. We've had our debriefing and it's time to start the tracking. There are 880 gorillas left in the world, which means they're critically endangered. They actually live in two populations in the world. Uh, one is the Virungo volcanoes, which spreads through Rwanda and Uganda and the Congo. And the other is here in the windy, impenetrable national forest. 400 gorillas actually live here, which means that's nearly half of the world's populations live right here in Bwindi. There are so few mountain gorillas remaining for several reasons. The area surrounding the gorillas' home is some of the most densely populated rural area in the world, leading to habitat destruction, as well as poaching and disease transmitted from humans to gorillas. Don't worry, before we started our trek, my group was screened for illness. Today's plan, we're going to hike into the impenetrable forest. We're going to where the gorillas were seen yesterday. And then we're gonna use our trackers to try and find which direction they've moved in. That might mean that we're walking for half an hour. That also might mean that we're walking for eight hours. <laughs> Despite their formidable size and strength, mountain gorillas are actually quite gentle and shy. They are naturally afraid of humans and typically will either flee or aggressively charge if people get too close to them. The gorillas that we're going to go and see have been habituated. That means peacefully over a period of time, humans went and spent contact with them, building up a rapport so that the gorillas realized that we were part of the neutral environment. Uh, the the group of gorillas that we're going to go and see today it took them about two years to habituate them. Whilst the gorillas are habituated, the elephants are not. So we actually have a guard following us behind with a rifle, just in case an elephant gets a bit too close. The problem is, I'm at the end <laughs> and our guard seems to have disappeared. I guess it's me and my trusty stick to fight off all the animals. The machete has come out. Now we're going even deeper into the forest. This is so cool. We found Damien again. He's That's gonna Damien. Damien, he's gonna protect us from elephants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to see how Bwindi impenetrable forest got its name. After about two hours of non-stop trekking, the surrounding bush began to grow thicker and taller and far more difficult to navigate. We were scaling up and down the sides of steep mountains, which proved to be quite challenging. This is so thick that I can just see people's heads disappearing off in the distance. <sighs> <laughs> that was a hole. I hope you appreciate all that I do to bring you these videos because this is difficult enough. We're on the side of a mountain and I'm doing it all holding my phone. <laughs> This is challenge, Asha. I think the challenge shouldn't even be about gorillas. The challenge is, can you climb down a mountain holding a cell phone, talking to a camera? Mission accomplished. After three hours of trekking, the gorillas were almost in our sights. The trackers who found the gorillas for us are doing like a, like a bird noise. And when I say bird noise, I literally mean our guide now has to stand and listen and try and move us in the direction of where they are. This is old fashioned tracking. No radios here. I feel like we're getting close. We're so close to the gorillas. Listening only to the calls of the trackers for guidance, we pushed further deep into the forest. 
We scrambled through overgrown jungle, snagging our clothes on thorny bushes, tripping on vines that coiled around the ground. These last few meters were hard work. Part of the problem is not only is the brush so thick, but everything's really wet here. And so it's hard to get your gripping when you're going up and down the mountains. Oh, okay. This is it. Mm -hmm. oh, we're just about to meet the gorillas. Excited, yes, but also incredibly nervous. These are wild silverback mountain gorillas. And after hours of trekking, just like that, there they were. Oh my god. This moment, this feeling, I will never, ever forget. It's hard to put into words just how I felt. It is a tense and thrilling experience. Here I was, stood meters from the world's largest primate, a wild mountain gorilla and her baby. This is amazing. The sounds that they're making. You can just hear branches snapping as the gorillas all around us are pulling down trees. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Gorillas are ground dwelling and live in troops or bands of around 6 to 12. Hidden in the trees and bushes around us were 11 gorillas in total, including three babies. Females usually produce just one baby every four to six years. In total, a female will only give birth three or four times in her life. Such low reproduction rates make it difficult for populations to bounce back following a decline. I could have sat for hours watching these infants. They were so like human children, exploring their environment, cautious yet daring at the same time, knowing that if they fall, they can always quickly crawl back to the safety of their mother. The gorillas were all around us, and so very slowly, and making sure to follow the guide's orders, we weaved our way through the trees to try and spot the rest of the troop. Gorillas as a species are on the brink of extinction, and these treks are a highly restricted activity. Permits to trek range from 750 to 1,500 US dollars per person, but this cost directly pays to protect the rainforest habitat and the conservation of the mountain gorillas. Thanks to the income derived from tourism, the mountain gorillas population has stabilized. Yeah. Careful what you wish for, Asher. The gorillas are so close you can practically touch them also means she is so close she can practically touch you. My heart was pounding as this female gorilla rose up and snatched a branch from above my head. In case you need reminding, this is a wild mountain gorilla sat next to me. I couldn't believe it. There are two species of gorilla, eastern and western, and each of these is divided into two subspecies. They are highly intelligent and use tools and various methods of communication, including 25 different sounds. Mainly herbivores, they spend most of their days foraging for bamboo, fruits, and leafy plants. But some species eat insects and larvae. Adult gorillas can eat between 40 and 60 pounds of food each day. And then, out of nowhere, through a rumbling in the bushes, the alpha male silverback suddenly appears and charges at our guide. I did not get any of that on video because I was absolutely terrified. And my first thought wasn't, oh, you should be filming this. It's not fight, flight, or get it on YouTube. What you are seeing now is seconds after the alpha male aggressively ran at us. You can see the guide's shoulder stood right next to me in the bottom left-hand corner of this video. And then through the corner of his eye, he spots our second guide. He switches directions to lunge towards him. The guide instinctively crossed his arms over his body, looked at the floor to avoid eye contact, making himself as small as possible. He then started grunting to imitate gorilla talk for relax, calm down, which seems to pacify the alpha. And then he turned slowly to walk away. This 400 pound alpha male was stood just feet from me. 
This is hands down the scariest thing I think I've ever done, and I've done a lot of crazy stuff. There's no cage, no protection. These are wild animals that were trusting enough to allow us humans into their world for a short time. What struck me most about my time with the mountain gorillas was just how human they felt. They are closely related to us, with 98% of their DNA identical to Homo sapiens. But the way they express typical human gestures and emotions is so truly profound. I loved watching this young female as she preened and groomed herself. There are moments that she almost looks to be daydreaming. She doesn't care about us. Completely unfazed by our presence, from the look in her eyes, it just felt as if you could see her thinking or contemplating her day. As we pushed deeper into the forest, we spotted more members of the troop. It's hard to describe, but I felt like we were surrounded by the echoes of the gorilla grunts and calls. Branches were snapping and trees were shaking all around us. Each sound meant that there was a gorilla nearby. We were fully immersed into their world. It was chilling and exciting and scary. Just listen to the noises they make. As our guide cleared the trees with his machete, we saw the troop had a rare second adult silverback. We tried to get closer, but without any warning, the original alpha male made his presence known with a loud grunt. I'm not gonna lie, I was scared, petrified. Terrified, actually. He was huge. Just look at his chest. In that moment, I felt totally defenseless. His territorial grunts were intended to assert his authority. This is getting petrifying. <laughs> Thankfully, once again, the guides knew how to calm the alpha oh male down. God. Are you not scared of him? <laughs> Ivan's a legend. <laughs> Once the alpha male had moved on and I had calmed down, we turned our attention back to the rare but equally impressive second adult silverback. His hands are huge. That's the old group leader. He's 38 years old now and he lost his crown. 38 years of age for a gorilla is considered to be pretty old. On average in the wild, the life expectancy is 40 to 45 years. This ape was a grandpa in retirement. There is a silverback gorilla. A wild silverback gorilla. Sitting over there. The alpha male silverback leads the troop. He makes a decision on when the group's gonna wake up, eat, move, and rest for the night. Adult males are called silverbacks because they develop a saddle-shaped patch of silver hair on their backs after they turn about 12 years of age. Young males are called blackbacks. He, he looks you in the eyes. It's... I were making eye contact with each other. And as I was captivated by the gaze of this once great silverback leader, I didn't notice a young male popped his head out of the bush and passed right by my feet. Oh my gosh, very close. Gorillas are social animals within their tight-knit nomadic troops. They often show affection, hugging and playing with each other, much like humans do. And also like humans, mountain gorillas laugh and even throw things when they get angry. The trek to see the mountain gorillas is challenging. You need to be fairly fit to do this hike and equipped for the humidity and high altitude, as well as the muddy conditions of the forest undergrowth. But the reward is well worth the effort. Discovering the haunting beauty of Uganda's rainforest, the open-hearted warmth of the trackers, guides, and porters, and the life-affirming presence of the mountain gorillas is something that will stay with you forever. Being that close to nature, seeking and observing the world's largest primate. Yes, I felt fear, but also I felt empowered. There is so much adrenaline and elation coursing through your body from the moment that you lay eyes on these gentle souls. Being in their presence is humbling, exhilarating, and utterly mesmerizing all at the same time. I was so sad to leave. But each group is only allowed one hour of contact, so not to stress the mountain gorillas. 
I also want to say a huge thank you to the Ugandan Wildlife Authority, the UWA. Their dedication and commitment to these mountain gorillas has helped increase the population of this endangered animal. I love this forest. <laughs> Challenge Asher complete. And I even have the certificate to prove it. But the real treasure are the memories that will last a lifetime.